Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. And welcome back to my podcast, Darling, I'm Depressed Again. Don't tell my mother. Where we discuss mental health in the youth, the adolescents, the teenagers, the high school students, primary school students. We discuss it in the college students, technical school students, university students, (laughs) the adults, the teachers, the elderly, the middle-aged. Listen. Once you are a human being, once you are breathing, once you have blood within your body, we have something for you. Now, each episode, we have a certain word that ties everything together. It gives the episode a certain flavor, a certain theme, if you will. And the word for this episode is rise. R-I-S-E, rise. Now, I know you may be wondering, where am I going with this? Okay, stay with me for a second. Stay with me. How many of us love animated movies? I know I love animated movies. I have always spoken about my love for Disney previously on the podcast, but I also really, 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 really have a deep affection for animated biblical films. Stay with me for a second. Stay with me, right? If you have never watched Prince of Egypt or Joseph, Prince of Dreams, you missing out. I don't care what no one say. You missing out. You are missing out. Let me tell you something. No matter what you believe, if you have never watched those movies, you are missing out. But my main topic of the main topic of conversation today is Joseph, Prince of Dreams. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the story of Joseph from the Bible, right? But Joseph, just to give a bit of background, was the son of Jacob, who married two sisters. It was a whole thing. And he had a lot of sons. A lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Like, a dozen, a lot. And Jacob loved Joseph the most. Out of all of his older brothers, he loved Joseph the most. Joseph was the youngest. And he made for Joseph a coat of many colors. Now I know what you're thinking. Okay, JJ, what does this have to do with mental health? Stay with me for a second. Let me break it down. I promise you this has a point. It has a point, right? Joseph had the gift of dream interpretation. So he would have a dream and God gave him the ability to break down what the dream meant, basically. He had dreams of his family bowing before him, of his brothers bowing before him, right? And let me tell you all something. That irritated them. Let, let me tell you all something. Y'all ever been around somebody that irritate y'all so bad, like once you go around them, your blood start boiling, your your skin start like breaking out knives, all your gums start bleeding, like your teeth start falling out. Like, have you ever been around somebody that you dislike that much? That that is how badly Joseph's brothers disliked him. And then let me tell y'all something. Honestly, let me tell y'all something. I feel like a lot of it could be placed on Jacob. You done know. You don't know they don't like the boy. You go make him a coat. Well, my God. Let me tell you all something. If it wasn't the dreams about them bowing before Joseph that did it, it was the coat. You make one son a coat, but you don't make none for no one else. But I digress. Let me tell you what later ha- what happened later on. It got so bad that Joseph's brothers resolved, came to the resolution. We're going to sell our brother into slavery. That, that, that's, that's the solution they came up with, you know, because communication between siblings wasn't actually a very big thing back in those days. I don't know why. I mean, you could go from Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau, Joseph and his brother. I mean, sibling communication wasn't really like a really big, Jesus wept. It wasn't a big thing. And they decided to sell their brother into slavery. They sold their brother into slavery. Now, I want you to imagine your sibling, or if you don't have a sibling, one of the people that you love most in the world 
one of the people that you treasure and value most in the world, betraying you and giving you up, betraying you and giving you up and selling you off as a servant or something of that manner to someone, how would you feel? How would you react to that? How could you feel? And during this moment, during this time in Joseph's life, it was such a low point for him because the people that he loved, the people that he valued, the people that he trusted so badly and that he trusted so much, they betrayed him. They sold him off. They said that essentially they were saying, your life doesn't matter to me. I don't care about you. Why are you still here? And they gave him up. My Lord, I couldn't imagine. Listen, I have two sisters. Trust and believe. If I was going down, buddy, everyone going down. I ain't the only one going. You weren't you selling me alone. I grab you by your ankle, I gink in you, I, 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 I hook in my elbow between you, something, something. You and, I ain't going alone into slavery, buddy. You allowed to drag me away kicking and screaming, but I promise you dragging me and you dragging the two of them. But Joseph's siblings, they betrayed him. They threw him away, they discarded him. How many times have any of us been thrown away by people that we thought loved us, by people that we thought valued us, by people that we thought we had this connection with? How many times have we as individuals been treated no better than trash on the street? And when you are treated in that manner, when you are treated in that way, whether you acknowledge it or not, it can put you in a pit of despair. I wish I had sound effects because I would do a push. That was a push moment. It will put you in a pit of despair. That is what the betrayal of his brothers did to him. That is what Joseph being betrayed by his brothers did. It put his life at that time in a pit. It put him in a pit. And they would quite literally put him in a pit later on in his story because, you know, Joseph went through the motions. He worked as a servant, but because of God's grace and favor, he rose to prominence in Egypt. And then Potiphar's wife made an advance on Joseph, and Joseph rejected her. So she lied and said that Joseph tried to do something to her. And Joseph was thrown into prison. <laughs> As if his life wasn't hard enough already. Yay. He was thrown into prison. Joseph, who had been given a coat of many colors, who had been his father's favorite, who had so many brothers, who had access to so much wealth earlier on in his life, was now a servant in prison so now the one who was elevated has been humbled has been humbled by the circumstances of life has been humbled by everything happening around him but do you know what i love regardless of everything that went on regardless of what happened in his circumstance joseph did not allow what happened to him to destroy him. I need you to stay with me for this one. Even though he fell into that pit of despair, Joseph still rose out of it. He still allowed himself to rise. How did he do that? By having faith that things would get better. By having faith that he would make it out of that prison. By having faith that he would make it out of a circumstance meant to leave him destitute and destroyed. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That one deep. Because when you have faith in the midst of an adverse circumstance, when you have trust in the fact 
when you rise in the face of a great struggle. When, li when life knock up, when life knock you down, when life say, I got something, I got something, another one, I got another one for you, I got another one for you. Why are you getting up? Why are you getting up? When, when life just keep blowing you and hitting you and hitting you and hitting you and hitting you, I mean, you getting up and life say, poop, poop, poop. You getting up, life say, poop, poop, poop. You getting up, each time you get up, life kick you down. Each time you get up, life slap you down. You have to rise each time life continues to spit in your face. You have to rise each time life tells you that you don't need to be here. You have to rise up. So let me tell you the blessing in rising. Joseph, because of his faith, because he continued to rise in his faith, regardless of what was, regardless of everything else, the keeper of the prison put him in charge of the prisoners. The keeper of the prison, the warden of the prison, the one that's supposed to be guarding him, the one that's supposed to be restricting him, the one that's supposed to be make, telling him to stay, that's telling him to stay in his place was giving him the liberty to tell the, the over the other prisoners, to tell the other prisoners to do what Joseph said to do. Because Joseph never lost faith in God. He never lost faith that he could make it out. He continued to rise. There are situations in our life that we don't know if we'll make it out. We don't know if we'll see the other side of it because someone has betrayed us. Someone has hurt us. Someone has cut us so deep and we have been bleeding for so long that we don't know if that wound will ever heal because the devastation and the hurt that has been caused to us has ripped a hole right through our spirit and we have no idea if we will be able to recover from it but let me tell you something let me tell you something right now the only thing that you can't recover from is death that's the only thing you can't come back from so don't think because of the situation that you might be in now. Don't think of whoever betrayed you in that moment. Don't think of whoever did this to you in that moment, that family member, that friend, that close associate, whoever may have done something to you that bruised you, that left you stranded alone with no one to care for you. Don't think that because it was done to you that you won't get through it because the same God that brought you to it can get you through it. Can I get a hey, amen? Hey, listen, let me tell you all something. <laughs> you have to think, come on now. The same God that brought you to it will bring you through it. Because let me tell you something. Joseph's brothers had a plan for evil. And it was turned around for good. Someone may have placed you in that pit of despair with the intent to kill you, not knowing that you might be their very salvation. Someone may have buried you, not knowing that they were planting a seed. Someone may have placed you deep within the earth, not knowing that they were putting you in the necessary conditions for you to rise through the ground and become the tree that will give them strength, that will give them nourishment, that will feed them and clothe them. Let me tell you something. Someone may have done something to you, but you never know how things will turn out in the future. So the same person that may have done something to you, you may be the same person that needs you in the end. God has a very funny way of working. And likewise, the same person that we may do something to might be the very same person that we might need in the end. But we can't get to that point unless we rise. We can't get to that point unless we rise. And a lot of us are laying flat on our backs because, you know, life already do their number on us. Life already do its number on us. You know, life give us lemons and we, 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 we just sitting down with the lemons in our hands. Life done brush us in our hair with the lemons. Life done kick us. Life done squeeze the lemons down our throat and tell them, <laughs> like, listen, life, of, life has done it. And some of us don't know where to go 
where do I go from here? Some of us don't know where to go from here. However, can I tell you this? When you rise, when you rise, there's only one way for you to go, and that's up. Once you've hit rock bottom, there's only one way for you to go, and that's up. You can only go up from here. You can only go up from this point. I am telling you, rise. Joseph rose. He rose up. Spiritually and literally. Because Joseph, God had it in such a way that <laughs> he saved his entire family's life. The brothers that had left him to die and the two I want I don't want to say to die because they didn't want to kill him. That's why they sold him into slavery. But though but you know to me, I mean, if you asking me, my siblings sell me into slavery, you're telling me go dead. That's what you're telling me. So it's so it's forget my life it's forget my life then. His siblings who say they don't care, who say Oh man, Joseph, man, this boy with this coat of many boy, this boy with this coat of many colors. Joseph, Joseph, say we got bow before him. Sell that, sell, sell that boy, man. I ain't got time for that. The same people who brought him to the lowest point in his life benefited when he reached the highest. Oh wow. Oh wow. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you this right now. Never stop rising up. Never stop rising up. Oh my goodness. Let, it's, and, and it's, so, it's so essential because Joseph's actions were literally the catalyst for many events that happened later on throughout the Bible. So what if he hadn't risen up? Then what? What if he hadn't risen up? What if Joseph had said, I'm going to lay here and die and I'm just going to be content in this sorrow and this misery and this horror of life and this in everything that's going on with me. I'm going to be happy here because nothing, it won't get better for me. What if he had said that? Where would they be now? What would have happened to his family? What would have happened to his father? What would have happened to his generation? What would have happened to his country? What would have happened to Egypt? What would have happened to all of them? Now listen, I didn't come here to preach, but I, I ain't come here to preach. I'm just tell I'm just saying the truth. When it comes to our when it comes to our minds, we become prisoners to our thoughts we become we begin to drown inside our own thoughts we we are swimming up we swimming up we swimming up we just we just don't know what to do and we start to sink to the bottom of our minds because it's all of our thoughts are just pressing down on top of us it's like an ocean and like do the at the lowest point of the ocean is where you feel the most pressure so all the all the thoughts are just piling up top piling on top it's like everything all are you thinking your brain let me tell you something a lot of us didn't know our brains could think of so many things at once especially for me i'm a person i know that failure is sometimes necessary for growth but i hate to fail and that's because i believe that failing and I'm trying to get out of that mindset that failing makes me inadequate. That it tells me that I'm not good enough. And for a long time, it was very difficult for me to rise up out of failure. It was very difficult, especially with me. My, especially, with, let me tell you all something. If you all don't have old school parents, you get a 90%. Okay, so where are the 10%? Oh my lord, the the ninety percent wasn't good. I mean, people get two percent, you know. I mean, I couldn't say that out loud because you know, but <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. You get un you, okay. You get ninety nine without the one percent. Okay, you get all days and one B. Okay, so where the other A? Let me tell you something. 
And even beyond that, it was just a personal thing I had within myself. John, you cannot fail. John, you cannot fail. Who will you be if you fail? Because all my life, I have been, I have based my importance on my academics, to use this example. So if I failed, whenever I come into college, <laughs> Come and get in the college, you, you might, you, 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 you're gonna fail once or twice, you know. And failing, it's like, oh my God, what am I if I'm not the smartest person in the room? Because that's what I, that's what I was used to being my entire life. I was used to being the person that people asked questions, the person that people knew, people knew to go to. I was used to that. So failing, it sent me into that pit. It sent me beneath the thoughts in my mind. I became a victim to my own thoughts. And I began to sink deeper and deeper into that pit. And I didn't want to rise up out of it because I didn't feel like I was good enough, that I was worthy enough to rise up out of it because I didn't succeed in that grade, because I didn't succeed in that personal goal, because I didn't succeed in doing what I wanted, because I didn't succeed in doing this thing, that because I didn't score a perfect grade because I didn't get that internship because I didn't do whatever it is that I wanted to do, whatever it is that I thought that I needed to do because I felt like a failure, I would sink into the pit of I'm not good enough and I don't deserve to rise up out of this. I punished myself. I punished myself for failing. And let me tell you all something. We are often the person that punishes ourselves the most. We punish ourselves the most. Yeah, my parents could ask me where the other 1%, where the other 10%, but they're not to take the test. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, pe people can ask that and beyond my parents. Be like, <laughs> people can ask, okay, so you take the test, where the other 1%, where the other 10%. Hey, hey, bro, bro, bro. You will not take the test. You cool. You cool. I mean, my parents. I mean, <laughs> like other people, like you know, like you know, when you get when you get those teachers and you get those you get those random adults that you haven't seen since you were two, asking you. Oh, so you got a three point nine? Okay, so where the other point then? <laughs> Can you show me your report cards? <laughs> How many three point nines did you get? <laughs> I had to start giving myself some amounts of leniency because you can't rise up when you have the weight of the world on you. You can't rise up when you are taking the weight of the world and putting it on yourself because that's a weight I chose. That's a weight I put on myself. I decided I was the one that said, I'm going to punish myself. I'm just going to sit in my room and be so sad because I didn't get to do this. I was the one who took that and I put that on myself, not my parents, not any old random adult, not any random teacher. It was me. I chose that for myself. And in the same way that I chose that for myself, I had to choose to rise up. I had to choose to rise out of that pit. I had to choose every time I went through something in my life, every time that I dealt with something that was so traumatizing or something that was so absolutely terrible, I had to choose to rise up despite not wanting to. You have to choose to rise up despite not wanting to. And I know it not might be easy. I know it's not easy at all because, you know, we have a habit of placing the weight of the world on our shoulders sometimes. Because we have so many expectations for ourselves. Or rather, others have expectations for us. And we don't want to disappoint them. But if you want to rise up, if you want to rise past everything, if you want to begin to get to that high point in your life, you have to shed some of the weight that's holding you down. Ooh, that was a mic drop moment. See, I would drop the mic, but this mic kind of expensive. But if you want to rise up, you have to shed some of the weight that's holding you down. That one deep. Now, that's a deep one. 
that one deep. So my so the better question would be for this episode, what's holding you back? Whoa. What is holding you back? Because to be honest, a lot of times we are unable to rise. Because Joseph never could have become the Safnath Paneo. Oh, I remember the name of the Kami Safnath Paneo. Oh, so basically that was a title um, that he was given. That's he was second in command in Egypt, I believe. He never would have become Zap Zapnath Paneo. And I don't want to mispronounce the name. Zapnath Paneo. Please don't hurt, please don't rob me if I'm butchering the name. If he had stayed in his hometown. Given he didn't choose to shed off the weight of, you know, his siblings and all of that. But he shedded it nonetheless, not by his choice, but it, he it still got rid of it. He still got rid of it. And he never would have been able to do what he did if God had not placed him in a better situation. If God, if he had not allowed God to place him in a better situation. So my question for you is, what are you holding yourself back from? What? Are you denying God the ability to do in your life? Denying God? How do you deny God? Trust me, you could deny God. Peter did it. Peter do it three times. They say, you know Jesus. Peter say, no, I know that, bite. They say, you know Jesus. Peter say, I know that, bite. They say, you know Jesus. Peter say, I know that, bite. Let me tell you something. You can deny God, especially access to your life. You can when you refuse to let him work, when you refuse to let him remove things from your life so that you can rise and elevate, we wonder why 20, 13, 14, 15 years later, we are in the same place because we never let God remove the dead weight. You have to remove the dead weight in order to rise. Rise up. And as I close out this episode, I wanted to encourage you that rising is never easy. Rising from any type of circumstance relationship, it's never, it's almost never easy. You know, as you gain altitude, you begin, there's less oxygen at the top. So you begin to get more lightheaded and more woozy and you begin to feel worse and worse and worse. But when you get to the top of the mountain, when you have risen to the top of that mountain, the view is so beautiful. The view is so breathtaking that it was worth the entire journey continue to rise. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. And this has been my podcast, Darling, I'm Depressed Again. Don't tell my mother. Until next time.